What's up guys? Today what we're going to go through is how to clean out this dryer. And I got my notes here because I want to go through this thing and I don't want to miss any points or any complaints that I've had, um, you know, as far as what customers have told me. So I've wrote some things down. I'm just going to go through here to make sure I don't, I don't miss out on any of the points I want to cover. But um, to start off, the customer comes in and they complain about what their dryer is doing. They don't really know what's causing it, so I'm just going to give you a few of the complaints that I deal with. Maybe maybe this is you, and you'll be able to say, well, hey, that's uh, that's kind of what mine's doing, so maybe this is my problem. Um, number one is dryer just takes a long time to dry. Um, they put their clothes in. Uh, when they got the dryer brand new, it would take 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and their clothes would dry. Now, all of a sudden, it's taken an hour to an hour and a half, um, so that could be an issue. Uh, clothes are hot, but still wet at the end of the cycle. What's happening there is when the, the dryer goes through the cycle and it's trying to blow that air out, but you have something that's stopping up that airflow, it's not able to get rid of the moisture out of those clothes. So that can cause this thing to run that whole time and get those clothes really, really hot, but at the end of the cycle, they'll still be wet. And then we get the complaint of the dryer runs for hours. Uh, some people say they have to to uh, cut the dryer on and run it for two or three hours before the clothes are actually dry. And a lot of times when you ask them, uh, have you got any heat at the end of that two or three hours or you know, during the cycle or anything, I say, no, I don't really feel much heat. But what's happened there is it's actually blowed the uh, high limit fuse next to the heating element and they're actually drying for two or three hours without any heat. So it's pretty much doing the, uh, the airflow cycle like a lot of dryers have. Uh, next thing is if dryer goes long enough it won't run at all so a lot of people come in and they'll say you know it, it started off it was getting worse and worse now it won't do anything at all well, what that's done is uh, when that lint gets built up you know bad enough and it starts getting where it can't get the heat out they'll uh, overheat and actually blow the high limit safety fuse so in that case the, the dryer to keep it from catching on fire it blows the fuse out and won't even let the thing come on so that's just a few of the, the most common complaints that I get of, you know, with this particular problem going on, just kind of let you know that way if you say, hey, mine's got one of those symptoms, then, then maybe this will be your problem. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and get into uh, how to clean this thing out and what you need to do for those steps. So like I said before, some of the symptoms, if, if you need to clean the dryer out, it's going to be a long dry time, you no know, heat, and your clothes that's wet after a cycle. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to show you how to clean this dryer out. And if you uh, if you got lint built up in, in the dryer, you're going to want to clean all that out. You're going to want to check also the hose in the back, the little uh, hose that goes from the dryer to the wall. And after that, you're going to want to check the hose that goes actually through the house itself. A lot of houses have got it, you know, where they run down through the floor, out underneath the house, and then, and then it's got a little you know, thing outside that blows the air out, a uh, little louver or a little cover vent for that thing. Um, the vents that go up the wall are a little bit harder to clean than the ones that go under the house. A lot of times when they go under the house, you can just crawl under there, you know, and uh, either take it loose from the floor and, and replace the whole piece is usually the easiest way to do it and the more expensive than that stuff is. Um, so you can just replace that piece and then take it off the outside, you know, and, and put a whole new piece in there. But if they run up through the wall, that always causes a problem because there's no way to actually get to that section that's in the wall. In that case, I'd recommend probably having somebody come out that, uh, that knows what they're doing and uh, have that thing, you know, professionally cleaned out. That way, when you get done, you know you've done it right. Um, people tell me all the time, they come in, uh, they're still having issues with their airflow. And they say, well, I've cleaned that, I've cleaned that vent out. And uh, you always wonder in the back of your mind, of course, you're in no place to, to question uh, their ability to do something, but you always wonder in the back of your, your mind, you know, did they, did they really clean it out good enough or did they really know what they were doing? So if you, if you don't and it goes up the wall, that's a little bit harder to, uh, to deal with. It goes up the wall and then maybe through the attic. You might want to have somebody come out that uh, does duct cleaning and, and get that fixed up for you. Now with these problems, the long dry time and the no heat close wet after cycle, um, usually when it gets to the point of no heat, it's already too late. 
because it's already below the thermal fuse. But if that long dry time and clothes wet after cycle goes long enough, there's actually a fuse on the heating element that kind of protects it from overheating and it'll blow that fuse out. Now if it goes a, a, a real long time or has a sudden problem, it can blow out what's called the high limit safety fuse. So uh, in that case, with the high limit, the dryer won't do anything at all. But if that, uh, or with the safety fuse, the dryer won't do anything at all. Now if that high limit closer to the element goes out, the dryer will actually run, but it won't, won't heat at all. So uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do then is start taking this thing apart. I believe all we're gonna need is a Phillips screwdriver a quarter inch screwdriver for the back and uh, five sixteenths to take some screws out of this on the front. Now before you do anything else with this machine, make sure this thing is unplugged because you don't want to get electrocuted 240 volts hertz, trust me I know. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started taking this thing apart. And uh, I think I'm going to start with the back. So I'm going to go ahead and cut and I'm going to get this thing turned around where we can go through the back first and I'll show you the, uh, the actual airflow uh, can I guess you can say that this thing sticks into and the uh, lower wheel itself. Okay so we're here at the back of the dryer and again go ahead and unplug this thing. I uh, can't stress that enough we're getting ready to get into some dangerous territory as far as le electricity goes. Um, before I go into this, I just want to mention what kind this was. This is a Whirlpool dryer. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of the Whirlpool dryers are, are this style here. Um, most of them that I run into are this style. There is a couple other kind out there, but anyway. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take these screws out the back. There's one here for the cord cover, uh, where the cord plug hooks up at. There's one actually underneath the cord right here. And then there's three down each side, and then one here. So we're going to go ahead and take those out we can get to this uh, this blower housing and uh, I don't even know what you call that thing. The lint filter can, I guess. probably see and I'll bring you in a little bit closer in a minute but as dust build up all around this cord where it plugs onto okay so that's what the inside of the dryer looks like now to, uh, to take this can off like I want to do uh, over here around the front you're going to need to lift up the little door for the lint trap you're going to pull this guy out You'll see right at the right at the front there is two Phillips screws. So you're gonna to want to take those out and that's gonna release the top of this this can here. And this is like I said right on top of the dryer. Two Phillips screws. When I bring you in a little closer I'll show you exactly where I got those from. In case you can't find them. Okay, so we got our two Phillips screws out. Now we're going to go down here on this can, and we're going to take the, uh, these are actually 5 sixteenths on the newer model, they're quarter inch, but it's uh, four of them across. So let me get you a little closer where you can see here. Makeshift 5 sixteenths, my good ones in my toolbox on my pickup truck, which is about a block from where I'm at right now. Okay, 
right, so that should pretty much free up this thing for most models. Now this one's got this little uh, little gizmo right here. What I do, I just pop that hose off. They don't all have that. All right. It's back where you can see this thing as we pull it off. So sometimes what I do to make it a little easier is I just kind of lean the dryer a little bit forward and I'll pull this thing up and that allows it to drop down just a little bit where I can go ahead and pull it out of the top. Okay, so while we're down here I'm going to set this piece to the side and I'm just going to go ahead and show you the, the blower wheel. So that's what that looks like. Sometimes you'll find a lot of lint built up on these fins that you just kind of can wipe down. I know it's kind of hard to clean in there, but just get it the best you can. Um, you know, when I say it's bad, I mean that I've seen these things completely stopped up like a big old ball of lint right in here. So just kind of make sure the fins are clean, kind of get down in here if you can. Sometimes there'll be like pencils down in here and paper clips and things like that. Now over here, this is where the vent pipe hooks up on the back. So you can reach, you can actually reach around through here and see your fingers come up. Through the vent so just kind of reach up in there or take something and, and make sure that that's good and clean it's uh, pretty good on this one all right now we got you can see this layer of lint across the bottom this one's actually not bad at all i've never opened this dryer up before it's the first time i've i've took it apart but this one's really not bad at all we'll see when we get uh up in here uh later on we'll see if it's any better it don't look like it's it's very bad up in there but yeah, when I say bad, I mean like sometimes they'll have like an inch, inch and a half thick of lint just evenly across the bottom um, likewise here. So what you're going to want to do is just go and, and kind of wipe all this stuff off. Um, kind of mine this electrical over here. It's not plugged in, so you shouldn't get shocked. But just kind of dust everything off. It don't have to be squeaky clean. Just get all that, that loose stuff off is what you want to do. So you want to just wipe, you know, and get all that nasty off of there. And over here you can uh, give you, so you can see where I'm at. So you go over here and you, you'll kind of want to just clean up around this little felt here. Get all that nice and clean. And uh, you can take your vacuum hose and just suck it, suck it off there. Get all that lint off. And you want to get on top of this guy over here. Maybe kind of clean up the cords. Definitely uh, brush that off. But that's a... Uh, other than that, this drawer doesn't look half bad. That kind of stuff there is what you want to get. Just make sure all that gets off. Because if some of that breaks loose and sucks up through the, the heating element, then that's a potential for it to catch on fire. For those of you who don't know, this is the heating element part here. Okay. So next we're going to go on over to the can that I took off this thing. This is where the, uh, the real good stuff usually settles at. Alright, uh... This is what the full piece looks like here. You can see some lint built up on the top already. Wipe that off. You turn it around and uh, up inside here, this is where all the, the air blows through from out of the tub. So you wanna get up in there and wipe all that off real good. Get this stuff sitting on this little, get this stuff sitting on this little ledge, get all that off, throw it in the trash. Um, down here, this, Let's see if I can show you about how deep this goes. I mean, this is just everything. Sand, crud, uh, beads, needles settle down here. There's a zip tie right there. I see a, like a wire nut in there, a clothespin. So, give me a little hole here where I can show you how deep it goes. Yeah, so that's pretty thick. You just want to get every bit of that out. Look at some of the stuff that got bobby pins, got a zip tie in, got a whole freaking clothes pin, a toothpicks get in here real bad, nails, anything that can get in there will get in there. That's for sure. Let's see what other goodies we got here. A lot of the real good stuff lays down at the bottom. Yeah, a lot of the real good goodies go down at the bottom. 
Let's see if we can find anything. Not real sure what that is. Ouch. Piece of wire. Just take your shot vac and st stick it in there and it'll suck most of that stuff out. Little bread ties. Get in there. More nails. Coins get in there. There goes our toothpicks. I knew there had to be one in there somewhere. Toothpicks. A butt connector for wire. This guy must have been done something with electrical. A chewing gum wrapper. Down in there. Costume jewelry. So yeah, that's got most of it out. So just take your shot back after you get it out with your hand. Be careful because, like I said, there needles and safety pins do get in here. So when you grab it in there, you might get stuck. But uh, just take your sh shot back and suck all that out. But you can see just how much, uh, that's, that's my hand there, just so you can see. Uh, you can see how much stuff we got, got out of there. Just that little bit of time and then, you know, get that stuff off too. And take your, take your little something and wipe that off. Get all that back clean. And uh, wipe it all out and get it all looking good. Get all that dust out of there. So that's pretty much it for the back. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and get it cleaned out and put it back on. And uh, I'm going to turn around to the front and we'll go ahead and take the tub out. And uh, that way you can see uh, what kind of lint we got on that end. One more quick thing on the back of this before we before we go, because uh, a lot of people may have not watched my other videos, but just some of the things I was talking about earlier about the safety fuse and the thermal fuse, I'm just going to show you where they're at. Um, that way, if you want to take them to your local parts store and get them to check them for you, you can do that. Um, like I said before, here's the heating element. You got the thermostats on the side over here. Um, you come on straight up the back from that. Thermostats, you go straight up. And uh, there goes that high limit fuse for that I was talking about sits on top of the element or sits above the element uh, can. And then you're going to come down here to the side over here behind the cord actually. Right here this white thing. That is the safety fuse. That's the one that will blow and keep it from doing anything at all. So if you got one that uh, won't do anything at all, it's like there's no power going to it, just pull these wires off, take that screw out, and take that down to your, your local parts store, and they could probably fix you right up with one of those guys. So that's just I wanted to show you uh, kind of where those items were at in case you wanted to do some troubleshooting yourself. Um, I got a video on how to change that and test it. Same thing with Elm. I got a video on how to test that and everything. Um, so just check those if you don't have any heat at all and see if that might be your problem also. Okay, so we're back here. We still got our lint filter out. Um, I was going to show you where we got the two screws from. So that's on, they're on top here. Let me show you where those come from. Right in here, on, like I said, on top of that uh, can, there'll be them two screws sitting right there. So you take those out to get that, that can out. So we're going to come back again. Okay. Once you get those out, and you got to take those out anyway to get this top off. So, just gonna lay those in there. Then we're gonna flip this thing back up to do that. There's two clips on the front. What I do um, on an older one, I don't really want to do this on a new one because it can scratch that. Um, but you can pull this front forward and get them off the clips like that. But on these older ones, I just take a trigger and just pop it up. Like that. So, we're gonna pull that out from the wall enough to lean this back. Okay, I'm going to bring you back in again so you can see what I see here. Alright, so this is going to be the amount of, of dust we're dealing with on top of the tub. This this we would have cleaned off when we had that can out. Um, I'm going to junk this dryer so there's no use in me, actually, going through the steps of cleaning it. But you can see the dust here, it's a little bit there, all around this rim. This stuff up here don't really affect the functioning of it, neither, neither does this, but it's down in the bottom that we're going to go next and, and show you what you really need to clean out 
I mean, clean this out, clean this stuff out while you're in here for sure, but um, this doesn't exactly affect the function of the dryer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead back and we're gonna get to taking this thing apart. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is in the front, about here, there are two um, 5 16 usually screws holding that front piece on. So we're gonna take our 5 16 driver, we're gonna get those up. Most of uh, the newer dryers have a, a door switch on the front and you'll want to take those before you actually take those screws out. You'll want to take that harness, there'll be a harness right here, you'll want to pop that loose that way it's, it's off whenever you go to take the door off. But this one's got a, it being an older model, it's got the door switch a little bit farther down. So I actually got to lean the front forward to, to get my wires off that door switch. So I'm going to lean that forward. I'm going to reach in here and pull these wires off. Remember where they go. If you got one like this, like I said with the harness, you can't hardly mess that up. But just remember where those go. That's what mine looks like. So now that the door has pulled forward, um, what you're going to notice is still acting like it's kind of stuck at the at the bottom. The way to get that off is you just reach reach here on the side, and you're going to pull up on the corner. That's going to release it from this little hooking mechanism. All right, and then the door should lift lift separate. So now we're getting to where we need to worry about. I'm gonna bring you in here. So you can see, you can see now there's a bit more lint built up in the corners. Um, these are actually the little uh, cables that hold the, the weight of, of the door from actually just falling and open. So again, not bad. You can see a little bit up in there. We're going to go ahead and take this tub out where you can see exactly how much is in there. But this is not a bad dryer at all. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, don't think just because this one's clean and yours is clean because this is this is a rare, especially one this old, this is a rare occurrence for it not to have no more in it than this. It either had, a, um, had them clean it out, you know, very often or they, uh, they had a really short vent hose that didn't allow much restriction. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and take this tub out. That way you can see what's going on inside. And to do that, we're going to have to take this belt off of this pulley. So I'm going to reach in, I'm going to lift up the front of the tub. I'm going to pull that to the side, get the weight off that belt. And I'm just going to go ahead and lift that belt off of that motor. Like that. And then this pulley will fall down. And uh, just remember where it was at. There's two set of holes on this one. You can't get to one side. So just remember how that was in there. We'll take that off and then we're going to make sure the belt's free of the motor. And we're just going to lift the whole tub out. So here's what we really want to get at. You'll notice that the motor's got a lot of lint kind of built up in and around it. Just take your lint brush and uh, get most of that out that you can. Don't be shoving your vacuum cleaner down in there or anything like that because you can mess the motor up. Just take your lint brush and kind of dust that out and then suck it off with your vacuum at the same time. Just get all that real clean. Make sure there ain't no dust around that motor. Just down here in the bottom get that. All that stuff stuff out the corners if there is any a lot of times it's where you change and everything is settle that um, make sure you clean the pulleys off real good got that sort of stuff going on there clean all that off and just get the bottom real good and get the motor real good check these pulleys while you're in here make sure they see these are these are kind of stove up a little bit not a free spinning but it should be fairly easy to spin kind of like kind of like that so just check all these and make sure they're they're good and loose. Same thing down here with your, your belt pulley. Just make sure that one's pretty loose. If it's real hard and you actually have to have to like bear down on them to turn them, 
then uh, then you probably need to go ahead and replace those. And that can happen over time, just this lint builds up on them and it soaks up. You know, if, 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 if you've had anybody that's greased them, it soaks up the grease. They don't come with grease, but um, that lint just gets built up in there and gets built up on them and, and causes them to get real stove up. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. That's the that's as far as you need to go with cleaning this dryer. Just get all that stuff cleaned out and uh, make sure there's no big old big old chunks of lint floating around in there, and uh, you should be good to go. Put everything back together, and uh, that should be it. Okay, just in case somebody wants to see it, I'm gonna go ahead and throw all this back together. That way, that'll be done. I won't have no questions asked about about that. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together and we're just going to uh, watch that process. I'm just going to make sure the bottom of the tub is seated in those pulleys. And then I just kind of spin it around a little bit so I actually feel it fall in. Make sure that felt's tucked in. Alright, so once we get that seated, we're going to take the belt, and you'll see on the tub where that belt normally rides at, so you can kind of line that up with that, that spot, and then I'm going to take you down here where we can see what I'm doing with the pulley. So we get the, uh, the pulley lined up in our little holes down at the bottom here, we're going to pull that up, get it tight, we're going to take our belt and thread through it, like that, and wrap it around that motor pulley. And we're gonna check everything to make sure it's all spinning correctly. Everything. Okay. Just gonna go back out. All right. Now we're gonna take the front. You'll notice these little holes down in the bottom corners. These little hooks here. You want to stick that hole into that hook. That on both sides. Get it locked in place. You want to take the wires for your door switch or if the harness, and if you got one with the harness, put the harness back on. Be careful with that. Uh, While you got this out, go ahead and make sure just to take some like Dawn dish detergent, whatever brand you use, and just kind of clean this off with some soapy water with your hand. Because what happens is the fabric softener that you use actually gets built up on this thing, and it's uh, it's so thick on it that it'll it'll trap water and won't even let water go through this screen. Um, air can still get through it, but it does restrict it because of the you know if you can put put water on it and the water don't even spill through, then you know it's got a good layer of fabric softener. Let me show you the water trick real quick.
just so people will believe me on that that's uh there you go you can see in spots like down here it's not so thick but up here that uh that water's not even even dripping through it just rolls around on top of it so with a little bit of help though you can get it wiped off and get that water to, to drip through it and that'll help out on the airflow a little bit also